So I think it's very obvious that I was a cool kid in high school. I mean, I was on the mathletes, science Olympiad, Envirothon, battle of the books, regional champion. Okay, fine. I wasn't a cool kid. I was one of them science nerds. And I still kind of am. There was nothing wrong with that, but I will say that being a super nerdy person did kind of impact my love life, primarily because my type was this. <laughs> Basically the super athletic, jock, sporty type of guy. You know, I even remember having a conversation with one of the guys that I used to like, and all he can talk about was protein powder. And I was just sitting there like, uh -huh. <laughs> tell me more about whey versus soy. Now, with being super nerdy, having that type, and being super assertive in the way that I dealt with crushes, as you could probably imagine, it didn't work out too well for me. <laughs> I remember one weekend I was feeling so sad about being rejected. So I got a little iced coffee and biked over to the town library to cheer myself up. And when I was at the library, I came across a book that explains the science behind emotions and such. And I remember being so mind blown by that book. I don't remember what the title of that book was, but I remember it was super embarrassing. It was something like Idiot's Guide to Chemicals in the Brain. I am the type of person who finds a lot of comfort in scientific reasoning. So comprehending the underworkings of the emotions helped me realize that everything I was feeling was natural human things and everything had a biological and chemical explanation behind it. I think that that helped me not punish myself for feeling anything that I felt moving forward, which is really useful for me in my turbulent teenage years. So every time I was dealing with a rejection or getting over a crush I didn't want to pursue, I referred back to that book all the time. I still remember so much from that book. For example, attraction starts when the ventral tegmental area of the brain produces something called dopamine, which is known as a feel-good transmitter. The dopamine chemicals are passed between neurons via the mesolimbic pathway, and this essentially makes the brain pay more attention and expect rewards from pleasant reactions. Additionally, something called the nucleus accumbens, which is this sort of stimulus central point in the brain amps up dopamine production and floods your brain with euphoria. This biological reaction is the reason why you're like hee 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 every time you either think about the person or you're around the person. This part got me thinking how similar having a crush is to an addiction because addictions also when something just overloads your brain with dopamine and gives you that high, which honestly is a little creepy to think about. <laughs> this flooding of dopamine in the brain contributes to you having essentially a growing obsession with another human being. And in addition to that, your mid and frontal cortex of your brain, responsible for critical thinking and reasoning and logic, also dampen. So basically our ability to analyze and judge the object of our affection dampens. This is why your crush seems like the perfect person. So you may be thinking like, what the heck? <laughs> why is my brain doing this to me? So the general idea is that your brain sets up this addictive state towards another individual as a sort of insurance policy to make sure that the two individuals stick around long enough to procreate. Because that's all this is about, procreation. So I used all this reasoning in my high school career to get over guys faster, get over rejection faster, and concentrate on my studies. However, for one of the guys slipped through and now he's my husband. <laughs> so I don't really know where I'm going with this video. One of my friends from high school reminded me that I used to talk about this sort of stuff all the time. So I thought it'd be a funny video to make. Remember, if you enjoyed this video to leave a like, leave a comment and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. See ya.